Ah, the Battlefront Classic Collection. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, yet another reminder that this franchise is cursed and it will take nothing short of the second coming of the Christ himself to save it. Welcome back to the channel. This is Star. I wanted to wait a few days before making a video on this to really digest everything that's been happening. I took some time off since it was my birthday week, followed by the annual spat of depression that usually comes with it. I hoped playing the classic collection would help and... <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. What the hell is this? Aspire Media has pulled off the unthinkable and have made these 20 year old games somehow run worse today than they did back then. Although if you like laggy, unresponsive games that crash frequently, then this is a must buy. Say what you will about the PR nightmare that was EA's Battlefront 2 back in 2017, but hey, at least that game worked better than this. In the first 24 hours, the Battlefront community learned that online multiplayer is completely wrecked. Thousands of players were trying to queue up with only a couple hundred able to actually get in and play. Servers weren't showing up at all in the browser, laggy gameplay with god awful hit registration, and even if you were lucky enough to get into a match, odds are your game would eventually crash. Jedi Survivor was notorious for crashing when it first released. I have both on PS5, and I've experienced more crashes with this game in the first 24 hours than I ever did in my time playing Jedi Survivor, which is just impressive. Aspire Media put out a statement responding to this disaster, and in typical Aspire fashion, they stopped short of an apology. They don't even address all the major issues, but here's what they said. We'd like to thank the Battlefront community for their overwhelming support and feedback for the Battlefront Classic Collection release. Yeah, that overwhelmingly negative review on Steam is some good feedback for you. At launch, we experienced critical errors with our network infrastructure. The result was incredibly high ping, matchmaking errors, crashes, and servers not appearing in the browser. Since launch, we've been working to address these issues and increase network stability and we will continue our efforts until our network infrastructure is stabilized to prevent further outages. Well, that's just wonderful, isn't it? But I still wasted 35 bucks on this. Honestly, if you bought this game and you can get your money back, do it. This is not worth 35 bucks at all. Not when multiplayer is this janky. Honestly, I just feel slighted. I've been had, hoodwinked, and bamboozled. Even if they can stabilize their network infrastructure, the price tag isn't worth it. Maybe if they drop it to 20 bucks or something, but even then, this just feels like a final nail in the coffin, man. I'm pretty much burnt out on this franchise. I've been making content on Battlefront for over six years now. It's been the lifeblood of my channel for a long time. And I've been, I think, one of the more positive voices when it comes to this franchise. I've at least given EA the benefit of the doubt when others didn't more than once, but I just don't have any goodwill left for Aspire Media. They had one job and they couldn't pull it off. I'm not gonna lie. I've actually been having a good time playing the Battlefront Classic Collection. Seriously, I've run through both the single player campaigns. I've run several games of Galactic Conquest, been having a great time with the instant action playlists and playing as all the creatures and troops that weren't in the EA remakes. But notice how that's all offline. It was going great until I decided to try multiplayer, which is the selling point of this entire thing. There is no reason to spend 35 bucks on this when the originals are still available. If you want some casual, arcadey, single player Star Wars, the game is actually still really good, but you can just get the originals for a third of what you'd pay for the classic collection, and the games will actually probably perform better too. Multiplayer was the only reason to get this, and it's laughably bad. Even the offline single player has some issues, Audio will do some really weird things sometimes where it sounds like a jet engine taking off. There were multiple times where textures wouldn't load in right, or even pieces of the environment like this balcony here are just completely missing. It's still there because you can shoot at it, you can see the sparks bouncing off of it, but it never renders in, it's just an invisible barrier. This is part of the Utapau mission in the Battlefront 2 campaign. The map is completely bugging out, and it didn't go away in between lives either. Also, maybe it's just me remembering wrong, but the sensitivity on controller feels so much slower than it used to be. Like I said, I've been playing this on PS5, and I've got my settings maxed out, and I'm still turning slower than an oil tanker. It makes an already janky experience even jankier, and it makes me appreciate how damn well EA's Battlefront 2 runs. My god! Also, what is that file size? 
I don't know if it was pure laziness on Aspire's part or just them not giving two shits about it, but there is no excuse for these file sizes when we have good compression methods readily available. They could have scaled some of these textures or the sound files down or whatever it is that's taking up so much space, but they just let it all hang out. Justin over at Eckhart's Ladder pointed out how on PC, this has a bigger file size than Elden Ring, which is just criminal. There's absolutely no excuse for that. This should have been the easiest of layups. It should have been an alley-oop into the cleanest dunk of all time. But as of recording this, the Classic Collection is still sitting at overwhelmingly negative on Steam reviews, only 20% of players giving it a positive review out of roughly 5,100 or so reviews. Elliot over at Battlefront Updates has pointed out that player numbers have plummeted. I think most of the player base shares my sentiments that we're just sick of all the BS when it comes to Battlefront. We haven't had a single good release since 2015, and I mean that in terms of good press. Both the EA remakes and now the Classic Collection released to really bad initial reviews and poor word of mouth. And it's a shame because that sends the message that the franchise itself or the games themselves are bad, which is not the case. It's just the people in charge of making the games, they don't have the same level of passion or care that the fans or even the developers do. I know that DICE wanted to make EA's games the best they could have been, but it was always corporate interference that stopped them. I don't want to sound overly pessimistic here, but I really feel like this might have killed any chance we may have had to get Battlefront 3 one day. This is the third Battlefront release in a row that has basically failed. And now to any other development studio out there who might want to try to make one, this franchise is just going to carry that reputation of being super high risk, super low reward. Why would any dev want to even try to make this cursed game? I can't necessarily say I'm surprised that things went bad, because this is, after all, still Aspire Media. I guess I just didn't expect things to go this bad. Aspire has worked on several Star Wars remasters before, including Republic Commando, Racer Revenge, a few others, so they seemed like a safe bet to make this collection too. But we have to remember this is the same company who was recently caught up in a huge lawsuit regarding KOTOR 2 DLC that they promised but couldn't deliver on. I wanted to make a video on that when I heard about the news last year, but it kind of seemed like low-hanging fruit at the time. Now I think it's actually really relevant because it points to how this company, and by extension the parent company, the Embracer Group, handles things. The DLC for KOTOR 2 was being developed, it was being advertised, only to have the news come out that Aspire couldn't finish the DLC on time, the whole project got scrapped, and they weren't going to offer refunds for the players who already bought the DLC. Yeah, shady as hell. Back then, the company had offered customers who bought the DLC another game from a chosen list of Star Wars games that they claimed were of equal value to the DLC. In terms of value, I guess it evens out, but it's the principle of the thing. They had the product up for pre-sale, people bought it, and they've basically got scammed. Hey, that sounds kind of familiar. I bought the Battlefront Classic Collection on pre-sale, and I got scammed. Weird, it's even the same company. The same company, by the way, who was also working on the Knights of the Old Republic remake. That's right, in case you forgot, it was Aspire Media who was making one of the most hyped Star Wars projects of the last decade. Only for the reports to come out that they are no longer working on it. Development got pulled from Aspire and moved to Saber Interactive, which is another company under the banner of the Embracer Group. Honestly, if I'm being candid, I think most of the issues with Aspire are rooted in the corporate rot that is the Embracer Group. Never mind how shady the whole organization's structure is, they just don't have their stuff together over there. Saber Interactive itself is actually trying to separate from Embracer. There's a group of private investors trying to buy Saber in a $500 million deal. I honestly hope it happens because then the KOTOR remake might actually come out. At the end of the day, I think the Steam score is a solid indicator of the quality of the Battlefront Classic Collection. 20% positive or a one out of five score is perfect. The single player stuff is still fun, and if that's all you play, then you'll actually enjoy it. You'll be in that 20%. But again, there's no reason to spend 35 bucks on that. Just get the classics on Steam. Your wallet will thank you. You can spend the remaining 25 bucks on snacks, and the game will run better. I give the Battlefront Classic Collection a solid do not buy out of 10, and that's my thoughts on this.
How has your guys' experience been? <laughs> Tell me some funny stories about your first few days of this disaster. Let's have some fun in the comments. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I'm not sure how much more Battlefront content I'm realistically going to make, so it's a good thing I'm moving on to bigger and better things like Stellar Blade. Hopefully Outlaws ends up being a hit and we can get back to feeling good about Star Wars, but that is all from me, baby. The sun is out. It is a beautiful day, so I'm going to go enjoy that. You guys have a good one. I will see you next time. Peace.